Hello viewers and welcome back to the Cape Wrath Trail. The last section took us to one of my very favourite places, the Fisherfield Forest, where lie the most majestic and remote peaks in Scotland. Though remote, these peaks are accessible from Shenov or Bothy, which is a bit of a detour if you're hiking the Cape Wrath Trail, but if you love the Munros and the Corbett's you may well find yourself in this beautiful area. It's a popular challenge to hike these mountains in one go, and Avagin and Rud Stachmore and my all-time favourite Munros. Meantime, we were faced with finding somewhere to sleep around the Invalale area. Wow. Nearly to the top just after breakfast on day nine. I had puzzled over this when plotting the routes, since none of us wanted to walk the long road section to Ullapool, preferring instead to head straight across the road at Invalale and continue across rough and remote country towards Oikel Bridge. So join us now and see how we got on. That's Anchalach. Until Avagin and the Fishfield Six, Anchalach was always my favourite Munro, and for most of those on the Munro quest, it is the most impressive in Britain. The drama, the airy ridge scrambling, and the views on a clear day are unforgettable. Back on the trail, the track drops down to the main road at Corrie Halley briefly before crossing over and taking to the woods. I'm looking back to Anchalet now, which is just in the sun. It's full of pine, isn't it? It's <laughs> lovely. Warm. Very warm. Yeah. Last night. There's all those slabs. What a setting. A lovely landscape, but from Invlale onwards the scenery was starting to look a little more wild, open, heathery and peat boggy. There's a group of hills, the Bedgera Grange. There they are. Distance. Just over the top. Shoulders a bit stiff. I'm fucking fantastic. As we headed for the main road at Invalale, we were still unsure where on earth we were going to pitch. So we sneaked below a bridge for some soup. I don't know, you set up for a bloody ramble at Fort William and you end up at bloody Inverlale. <laughs> <laughs> so we simply decided to carry on over the road, through the forest and take our chances on the open wall. And for all those that need it. But before that, we had a stiff climb through Inverlale Forest to attend to. That's back to Anshalek. The track you can see here soon turned to bog and then pathless heather as we aimed high above the river rather than walking all the way alongside it following its twists and turns. It's quite the rain but still over there in the sunshine. This turned out to be an optimistic assessment of the situation. I think that's Shannon Ray out there. So we just walk past it now. If it is, that was Sue's last Munro the first time round. I'm not entirely convinced that the hill indicated is Chenevray, but here it is so you can get a look for yourselves, and please do let me know if our assumption was correct. This remote mountain was indeed my last Munro, completed in April 2008, 
We approached it from Oikel Bridge, which is where we were aiming for the following day. But meantime, back in the rough right, heather... I see some hills in the distance. Like some of the far north hills. And uh, just tracking down to this area here. I am for a camp tonight. I'm looking back to Chenevre and the Jerich Hills. Back to the panics now. End of day nine. This is our camp. Just by the river. Back up to the Ben Jerrig range. Graham's just over there getting some water. Water. Another bad pitch really. Quite windy. That's so popping out. So yeah, I think we're okay. There was little shelter from the wind which picked up considerably later, but we survived with a few guy line adjustments during the night, though the rain and wind didn't make sleeping peacefully very easy. I'm off out for water so I may be some time. Sometimes it just gets really rough, doesn't it? Do you think it actually feels worse than it is outside? Yeah. You'd think it was a proper storm, but I think it's just gusty, isn't it? True. However, I don't look at the sleep very much. <laughs> and my air mattress went down again. Well, it's not always dry in Scotland. Yesterday there was sun and there was So it came over yesterday. Bit of a bleak morning this morning. And as the light startled our mizzle, but just look down here. Look at all this business. Just beautiful. That water is so clear. The ravine. Look at that waterfall going over there. On top, it's just not a bit better weather. Well, this is very gnarly. We discovered a couple of miles later that we could have had some shelter from the previous night's rain. Well, we're in a little fishing hut, just at the head of the lock before the bothy. Which bothy is it we're headed to? Do you have bothy? No. Uh, no. Not damp bothy. There's a little. And then still. The head of the lock is a place where at least you get three people in here comfortably. It says, Welcome, please respect the hut. Please put the hook back on anything that you use. Kettle, dustpan and brush. The That's other bits well and pieces. Case, isn't it? Fancy the guide but not mentioning this hut. Right at the head of the loch. At the end of this loch sits the first of two bothies, Noch Damf Bothy. We weren't particularly impressed with it and agreed the boathouse would have made for a much more pleasant shelter. And there's the bothy. Fireplace in there. Fireplace in here. A bit damp in here. But this is what we could have had last night if we'd been able to get this party. At least it's stopped raining. Birds are singing out there, it's dry. But unless you're going to sleep on the floor, I wouldn't fancy that. 
That was a bit vicious. Rough night last night. Thought I'd really walk through, son. Yeah. Sun comes out. <laughs> and there's the schoolhouse bossy. We're all baking hot now. Skylark. Much happier. Schoolhouse Bothy sits in a lovely situation and although small, it's a much nicer prospect than Knockdown. So why do you think it's called the Schoolhouse Bothy then? I reckon there's about 2k left to Oikel Bridge, so we're, uh, we're just having a leisurely stop to look at the weather forecast, which looks good. You can see that Graham's gone for the comfortable option. <laughs> How's that feeling, Gray? It's, it's okay. It's mainly the tick-free option. <laughs> it's tick-free. <laughs> no tick nests today. We had by now realised that in order to access Cape Wrath we were going to have to gain a full day's walking. The MOD were due to be dropping bombs and carrying out military activity on the very day we wished to complete the trail. Well, we spot a bridge and that must be Oakal Bridge. And that'll be the hotel. We just found out that there's military firing on the 14th. When the red flags go up in this area, nobody can get access across the moor to the lighthouse. You'll need to check the website and be aware of the dates of these activities when you schedule each day of your hike to avoid this. So we had come to the sobering conclusion that today was going to have to be a much longer day than I had planned. The route from Sandwood Bay to Cape Wrath is going to be closed for three days. Hey, hiking, brilliant! <laughs> the section from Oikel Bridge to Benmore Lodge and Loch Ailsh is nearly all forestry tracks which was pretty tough on our feet when we finally pitched up for the night. There was only one brief spell through the trees which was not a track. Here's the ruins of Saliki. 20 odd miles in on the day. Very eerie spot. And it's persisting it down just as it started. Ain't hiking fun. Ain't <laughs> hiking brilliant. Was that good Dave? I'm stuffed full of noodles and black bean sauce and chorizo. Do you feel cheerful? Yeah, but there's a strange order. <laughs> Are they your socks? I'll move them. It's been a really hard day. We've walked 23 miles. It's rained most of it. We had a bit of a sunny spell in the middle. Found a pitch in a less than salubrious position. Oh. And it's just started raining again. However, the forecast is good for tomorrow. Fingers crossed. It's howling a bit outside. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Yeah, probably. You can see it rattling the tent. Lost my compass holder. You've lost your compass holder. Oh, another search underway. Right. In camping, brilliant. Well, viewers, enough said. Please do join us for the next section. The following day was to be our best yet. It's magnificent. I have always wanted to see this. So until next time, cheerio!